Hi, it's Nick Lefebvre here, and for my presentation today, I'm going to be showing you how to create a div element, and then making a button and appending it to our div element, then changing a value with our button from off to on and on to off, like a switch, and then we'll be accessing this button from a different file and applying a function when the button's pressed, and then reversing a function after the button has been pressed. So to start things off, I'm just going to show you what we're dealing with here. So if I click on this with the web developer tools, I see that it's a canvas and I see all these other division elements here. So the first step what we're going to do is we're actually going to create our own new one where we can append our button to it. So to do that, I'm going to go to the JavaScript here and actually create a variable named new div. And then by adding this here, this will tell it to add a division element to the HTML and adding this here will create an attribute onto this div element named target and that target will be named test so we'll be able to find this division element by using these attributes here. So now that we have a variable called new div we actually have to append it to the notebook. So if I scroll down here I'll see that I'm actually going to append this new div element here to this to insert div that's already been created by the notebook. So I'm going to save this file and we're going to go and see if we can find our div using the web developer tools. So I'll just refresh the page here. Okay, so I'm going to click on that same canvas here and now that we see we've made an actual div of our own named test. So now we'll be able to use this and append our button to it. Okay, so now I'm back at the JavaScript and what we're going to do is actually create a variable named grid button and this will tell the HTML that we're actually creating a button. Now here's where we're going to add some elements and attributes to it so we'll be able to find it later on and use it in our different files. We can actually turn values on and off and such. So what we're doing here is we're just giving it an ID named grid element that way we'll be able to find this later from other files and we're giving it a value named off which we'll later be changing to on when it's clicked and off when it's clicked again. This here is actually what the button will show up as called. So when you see the button, it'll be called grid on and grid off. And then this here actually appends this grid button to our new div element here, which we've created above right here. So I will save this and we'll see what we see now. Just go back to the notebook and refresh. Okay, so now we actually have a button here that we created. So I'm just going to click on that with the uh, developer tools. And we'll see that it was actually appended to the div that we created. And now we have our button here with our value off and it's named grid element, which we put in the JavaScript. So everything's making sense so far. So now that we have a button that we can actually click, what we want to do is make it do something when we click it. So the first thing would be to maybe send an alert when that button has been clicked. So to do this, we're going to be using this function here, get element by ID, which we're going to look for a grid element, which we called our uh, button to begin with, and on click will now be the function. So when it's clicked, this function will run. So we'll just maybe start off by making an alert so we can see exactly if our button's being clicked. Okay, so I will save that. So it's just an alert here after it finds our grid element button. Save that, and now we'll go back to the notebook. Give it a refresh. And our button's there, and now we can click on it, and it actually now alerts us. So we were able to find our button from a different file, and when we clicked it, we sent off an alert. So we're able to find our button, and it's already doing some functionality. One of the key points of having a button is you want to know when it's been clicked and then when it's been clicked again. So I'm going to add a little bit more functionality to our button here. So just going to get rid of our old alert here. And now we have this if else statement. So basically what this is doing 
is looking at the grid element when it's been clicked and seeing if the value was set to off. If the value is set to off, we're going to then change that value to on, or else the value is already set to on, so then we'll change it to off. So this way we know when the button's been clicked, and then we know when the button's been clicked again. So we'll save this and look at what has changed. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the grid element here. And now we can see our value is set to off. And then when I click it, it actually changes to on. So if you look down here when I push the button, off, on, off, on. So that way we know when our button's being clicked and when it's being clicked again. That way we can perform a function and then reverse that function. It's an off, on switch. So one of the tasks we were given was to create a graph element. So the user, when they're using our notebook, they could choose to put on a graph and take off the graph to see exactly what was going on. So I'm going to show you just the function that we used to do that. I won't get into all the details of how we created the lines. It was, it was quite basic. It's just two um, for loops creating uh, lines on the X and Y plane just to make a, a grid, basically. But by using this off and on function from um, our button, we can actually put on the grid and then take off the grid with the exact same button. So I'm just going to take this off. So it's exactly what we had before, but just with a little bit more um, uh, code in. We're actually using the paper.js um, library here. So I will save this and I'll show you exactly what happens now. Do a refresh. So there's our grid button. And now you'll see it gives them a nice grid to see exactly what the turtle's doing. And then if I click it again, it takes it off. So yeah, that's basically what this button does, and I think lots of these uh, principles can be used in other things. Lots of them are, are the same. It's uh, about creating divs and buttons and values and, and how to access those values and what you can do with them. So yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully learn something.